He's annoying. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Hey, welcome everyone to another exciting episode of the original sports podcast with yours truly, Mark the Barber Meriday. Rasheed the Dream and T Sis. We up? don't know if our boy Chops is going to be here. Chops went camping this weekend. We, we don't know if he's going to make it or not. If he pops did he go, up, did he go camping in. or glamping? Yeah, I think he's glamping. Uh, yeah, he probably went. Sizzle, glamping. Explain, explain glamping again, real fast. Glamping, you just pull the car up, you get out and set up right there. <laughs> camping. camping, you put that shit on your back and you go in the woods somewhere. And take your life in your own hands. You think you might see Bigfoot if you roll up in the woods, though? Seriously. Bigfoot day. It don't matter. You know, <laughs> about Bigfoot. Yeah. Bigfoot saw Chuck Norris. He ran away. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sis told me this morning. I was telling Sis this weekend. Uh, I think I put on like 15 pounds between having some beverages and eating. Sis said, I got on the scale this morning and it started laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm the only one exercising. Yeah. No, I exercise. Okay. I I think it's the alcohol though. I think it's the alcohol playing a toll, playing a toll. I told my wife, got to cut back for a few weeks. Can't be having anything. Weeks. Just have a bit one beer. You don't got to drink six. Oh, I never. I don't drink beers. Okay. It's it's those shots by my buddy Joe, Joe the Elf. He makes moonshine. He mixes up all these crazy drinks. It's nuts. Okay. I told him, Joe, I, hey, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. I got on the scale this morning. It said you might want to take your clothes off for more accurate reading. <laughs> you weren't in the mirror, were you? That's ugly naked. Oh that, boy, that's bad naked. That's, you know they call that the truth. They call that, that the, is, truth. the truth. The truth. The truth. They said, if you really want to be uh, unhappy yourself, start jumping up and down. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, this afternoon, on. before I get into the monologue for today's show, uh, I, I want to pay my respects uh, to Bill Walton. Bill Walton was kind of a unique guy. He was 86 and four while he was at UCLA. Uh, in one of the championship games, he was 21 of 22 from the floor. That's pretty freaking amazingly, to me at least. Uh, most notably, he was one of the most passionate, grateful dead people you'd ever meet. I did not realize that he was only 71 years old. I didn't either. Yes. No, not, 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 he yeah. never averaged over 20 points. In I'm, the looking these, I'm looking at these stats, and I'm like, hmm, interesting. I would like to know where they put him in the in the scheme of big men, at what number. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would I mean, be although he did, he also averaged, you know, like fifteen rebounds with that those eighteen points. So he was he was doing his he was doing his job. Would he win two championships with the Celtics? I think well, he one won. with Portland. He beat the, he beat the uh, Lakers, I believe, with Portland. This must have been a year he. This must have been 77, 78. He averaged nineteen and thirteen and five assists. Jeez, Portland's that's, in the that's pretty good back then. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, oh. okay. Relatively okay. speaking, yeah. okay, gotcha. relatively speaking, that's pretty good from back then. But uh, no, you just need to tip your hat to the guy. He, you know, he. They said nobody, nobody even really knew he had cancer. Like he yeah. didn't really put it out there. And I kept wondering why isn't he on any of these basketball games? Yeah. You know, but he's probably going to be glad he's gone now. God rest his soul, because you know the Pac-12 is about. It's about done. The Pac-12. Is he one of those guys so, where you think? Yeah, you know, he was a contributor. He 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 played some big big time games in college and in the pros. He got his rings, he's got uh recognition, notoriety, stand up guy, never did you know in the media and all that. It's just like you didn't really know, like you say, you how passionate he was about the dead, how passionate he was about sports, but you didn't really know until he's gone. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. He got a law degree from Stanford, by the way. Oh, really? Hey, what's going on, our guy Daniel? Hey, look at it, man. Daniel Barry's here again. 
Got to appreciate you know, being every Tuesday, man. We we love you for it. Thanks for joining us. Hope you What's like up, today's TV? show. Hey, um, all great baseball teams have amazing minor league systems where development and preparation for the show are the focus, guys. Uh, the OSP is really thrilled to have Indianapolis Indians broadcaster Jack McMullen joining us on this episode today. Uh, the Indians... Uh, the, the, the Indians are the AAA affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, we're going to talk with Jack about, you know, who's the next big thing maybe coming up from the Indians. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, who could be the next guy to join the varsity roster and make an impact. Uh, is Jack Sawinski and Henry Davis ever going to make it back up and, and be productive? Is there a legit first baseman in Indianapolis? And, uh, mm. you know, w- what can we look forward to? As, th- as time goes on, if you're a Pittsburgh Pirate fan. So, hey, if you're listening, crack open a cold one. Cold one. Start shelling some peanuts. It's peanuts. time to play ball. Play ball. Don't forget your nachos. Yeah. Hey, could someone tell me why Major League Baseball had zero games on on Memorial Day? Well, uh, the restaurant. Base- Go, Sheen. The restaurants weren't open either, so I don't, I don't know. I was trying to get something to eat and nothing was open. So, but yeah. McDonald's was. I don't want to make, come on, man. Go ahead, Tara. I, I just think right. fan base is, you know, pretty meh. But on on Memorial Day, they're not going to get much. All fan bases aren't it, meh. People are going to be, you know, out and about doing their own thing. They're not going to have a lot of spectators. No. When no, you say but, that, you mean Monday? Is that what you meant? Yesterday? Yeah, they, I mean there were a few games, but like there were third, there were twenty six other teams or some some crazy number of teams that didn't play. The Pirates are one of those teams. You know, I mean, I, why are you not playing on a national holiday? I don't understand it. Meh, maybe they ain't want to. Uh, I mean. At least in Pittsburgh, they probably figure ain't nobody gonna be showing up that too many people. So Memorial True. Day is the most traveled holiday in the US. So a lot of people are like I said, they're a lot of bikers. They're they're not they're not around. You mean motorbike bull, like that? A lot of bikers were out on my no. way back from Cooperstown. What do they call that? Blaze of glory or rolling thunder. Rolling thunder. Rolling thunder. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hey rolling uh, thunder. That's what Richard used to roll. That big, he he called that Rolling Thunder. A PGA golfer, Grayson Murray, thirty years old, uh, died over the weekend. He committed suicide. A lot of alcohol, mental health issues. He was only thirty years old, guys. Any thoughts on that? How a thirty-year-old successful young guy like that couldn't get help to get himself right? Hmm. Or maybe he well, tried to get some help and he just couldn't accomplish it. If he had mental health issues, I'm wondering if he was on meds. Meds and alcohol don't do well. Right. Um, I don't know, man. Um, hmm. Yeah. yeah I don't that, know. Didn't help, that didn't help the cause. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I mean, then it, maybe he was hard on himself for not always. Win. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. There's a lot that goes into that, man. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, to be because from what I hear, he was pretty good. Hey, and he was. then and then to uh, you know maybe be down on him. I don't know. I don't know. But the mental issues and the alcohol—that's never a good mixture. My no. favorite was when he broke his club and threw it in the lake. I'm like, man, this guy's just like me. <laughs> yeah, his parents. I mean, I, I I thought about it. He's 30 years old. I could have been his dad. Easily, easily, you know, so I can only imagine uh, what they're going through emotionally, uh, what a hit it takes to the sport. Uh, you know, we'll see how the sport plays itself out. Maybe they'll maybe they'll become more uh, astute to guys using alcohol heavily. Maybe they'll become more astute to guys who have mental health issues and, and might need support. You know, I mean, when I start thinking about guys who have mental health issues and needed support, I think of uh, step on to it. He made so much money, he walked away from professional football with a couple years left on a contract. The problem with that is, I mean, if you if you got to figure in, in football with a lot of the banging, there's probably some a lot of people who have that is, these issues. So I don't, 
uh, you start helping everybody. I mean, I, they should be, but you start helping everybody, and you might have not have too many people on Sunday. Because you, you got to have some kind of program in place, though. I think you need to have some kind of program in place for these guys to be able to turn to and get the support they need. Hey, Celtics just swept the Pacers. Um, is this the time they get over the the hump finally and grab that chip, or or, or is Dallas going to have or, or Minnesota going to have something to say about this? I, I do you think Dallas be, can can get beyond be Minnesota? Dallas. It's going to be Dallas because they're up yeah. three zip. Um, it's going to be Dallas. Um, I can't see the Celtics beating Dallas. Really? Celtics have a, a strong two, but they're strong two. Usually one's off on one of these games. It's, it's a weird dynamic. Like they say the Batman and Robin thing. Well, Batman's going to get you 30. Robin should get you 20. Well, some nights their Batman will get 30 and their Robin gets 10. It's it's just a weird, whereas whereas Luca and Kyrie are getting 30 a piece a night. Mm-hmm. A piece. Yeah, well, 60 to- points in two people. Boston took both games this year. Okay, it's gonna be interesting. They it's it's a little different though. It is. Yeah, it's it's regular season, as my man Drew Shafino would say, regular season and playoff NBA two different things. Yeah, playoffs. Yeah, I know Gar Shafino. No, I I can see uh, if Luke is healthy though, because there's a little question mark over his head. Uh, I could see them definitely giving a push right there and, and getting by the Celtics. All they got to do is split up and. In Boston, and I think they can sweep in, in Dallas. You know, who gets home court advantage if it's those two teams? I, I think, think Boston it's... does. They're, they're number one, aren't they? What are the, oh, yeah. As far as seeding goes, I think they were one. I think Dallas was four, if I'm not mistaken. Or hmm. two. They weren't one. They weren't one. So, yeah, that might be it. wonder yeah. why Cuban decided to sell this team. Now that he has finally put together the pieces of a puzzle that are productive for him after years of being in the abyss. Uh, Shark Tank. He's on Shark Tank. He ain't got time to be running their base basketball team. He, do you remember how much money he got for selling it? And he gets to make some executive decisions and, and basically run it with not having the aggravation of all the bills. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you. Yeah, hats off to him. Have you guys been paying any attention to the NHL? Um, I think the NHL wants to see McDavid and the Oilers versus the uh, New York Rangers. I really oh, do. Yeah. I, I could I could see that happening. They want to get McDavid on the big stage finally because he's supposed to be the marquee player uh, in the NHL. But I, I, to me, I don't know about that. Hey, what's going on, Smitty? Good to hear from you, my guy. What up, Schmitz? Schmitz talking liquor. Like- we're talking a little talking a little hockey right up your alley, buddy. Well, I agree. They've been wanting to see McDavid. Uh Rangers. What about, not, what about Dre Sidle? Y'all living out Dre Sidle. I they're love Dre Sidle. They're not in the clear. Rangers aren't in the clear yet. They're only up two games to one. But Edmonton's not up already. Edmonton's down two one, right? Yeah. 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 So I will not, tell you this. Florida. Outplayed the Rangers. I watched that game. Florida outplayed the Rangers. Florida has more tenacity to the puck. They hit. They they they're, they're very impressive. And I I always thought they were. Kachuk has brought such a a dynamic there to that team that it's unreal. And then you've got a guy like Alexander Barkov who can score at will pretty much. And he's hidden because he's in Florida because of Tampa. And, and uh, what's his name down in Tampa? The $18 million man. Did you see Barkoff on that overtime breakaway get shut down? No, I didn't see that. They, piece. they, had, they were down two or three goals. They came back. And they came it. roaring back. They were down 2 nothing, And then end up going overtime and lost it. Well, it's just like – it's just like uh, – it's just like Dallas last night. I mean, Edmonton was up 2 nothing going into the third. I was watching some of that. And all of a so, sudden – what All of a happen- sudden, Jason Christensen just lit it up. How about if the Stars and the Mavs both win? What's that do for Texas? Well, we know what Stars not going to win. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Does that put more pressure on them? <laughs> I don't know. They've been out of football town. Hey, listen, they've got enough issues as it is. They've got to figure out how to sign Prescott. They're going to have to sign – 
uh, C.D. Lamb. They're going to have to sign Parsons. I mean, they're they're yeah. What's his name's coming back? So they'll be all right. Just keep feeding him the ball. Who? Freaky Zeke. Oh, Emmett Smith. Or uh, Freaky Zeke. Well, yeah, you might as well have Emmett Smith back. Yeah, yeah. he ran. Yeah, good, Smitty. Right? I, I I agree with you. Dallas is going to win that series. I just. I think the Oilers have got to make a splash on defense. And I had a conversation with the guy recently uh, via social media. And it was a good conversation, but he he thought that they were pretty well set on defense with the guys they had, Darnell Nurse, and, and I forget who the other guy was we were talking about. And I said, I would love to see Pittsburgh trade uh, Eric Carlson and get Dreisaitl. They don't need Carlson. They don't need him in Pittsburgh. You think they're going to give up dry, dry saddle for him? They're going to they're going to have to do something. You keep sitting on that one and two for this will be what year eight, right? I think this is the eighth year. Are you saying so, they're you saying they're sucking up too much of the money? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, uh, uh, McJesus he makes the most money in the league. He makes the most money in the league, but deservedly so. He yes, wins the scoring sure. title and yep. stuff, but. You know, you never saw Crosby asking for the most money in the league. Now, it, it, after all these years, Crosby has earned over $154 million, But still, at the end of the day, he doesn't ask for a salary of, you know, $16, 18000000 million. He's very well content at 8.7. So he's contented. Yeah. Hey, our guy should be joining us real shortly. Let me give you his bio here, fellas. Uh, he was a sports broadcaster from the Indianapolis Indians. Pittsburgh's AAA affiliate, like I said. Uh, he's a 2020 graduate of Syracuse University. He went to the Newhouse School of Public Communications. Uh, in Syracuse, he filled a variety of broadcast roles, most notably the sports director at WAERFM. And uh, Jack also has his own podcast. It's called Just Baseball Media. So I'm looking forward to talking to Jack, talking about like I said, the Indianapolis Indians. I like minor league baseball, fellas. I almost like it a lot better than I like major league baseball, and I'm a baseball fan uh, at heart, no question about it. But I just think those guys play a different way when they play in the minors. They're playing to get to the show. So they're willing to do things a lot of guys who get paid and go to the show don't do anymore. You know, a lot oh. of those, in my opinion, a lot of those guys just don't care. Now – now I'm getting paid. I don't, you know, I don't care. I.e. Rendon. But not only that, from a fan's perspective, the venue is amazing. You have to pay attention. You're going to get a square one right in the eye, you know. Not anymore. They got big nets up. Here's Big Jack. Let's talk to Jack Mack. Hi, Jack. What's up, Jack, fellas? Jack Mack. Mack, what's going on? How are Thank you? you How are we doing, guys? Good, right, good. Right. We were just talking about... Uh, your success up there at Syracuse was it too cold for baseball, my friend? Too cold for baseball. It was a it was a lacrosse school, no Division One baseball in Syracuse, so I had to learn how to call oh, wow. lacrosse. And I was like, "What am I doing here?" I played club baseball at Syracuse, which was like fun. It was you know relaxed environment, but yeah, man, like I had to get away from campus to call baseball. So it was uh, it was a lax school. Fell a little bit short in the NCAA tournament. I never once thought I would get into lacrosse, but here we are. With Jim oh, nice. Brown's stick still hanging up there in his Hall of Fame. I know, right? Jim Brown, Jim Brown, uh, wait, Gary Gate, a big name in the lax world. How about the Powells? You know any of those? I didn't know him until I got to campus, but Jim Brown was the guy that uh, I knew, and and his, uh, yeah, his lacrosse stick and his football helmet are still there on campus. Nice. Well, Jack, here's a little piece of knowledge for you. On Friday, uh, we did a podcast with uh, Michael Rabel, the CEO of the PLL. Yep. yep. Yeah. I actually coached Michael and his brother, Paul. I don't. I didn't know a damn thing about lacrosse. I moved here from Western Pennsylvania. I coached football at the high school, and they said, "Hey, we need somebody to, we need somebody to come in here and just help out with lacrosse." And I was like, "Ah, I don't know much about it." And they're like, "They'll teach you." That was it. They wanted me to come in and be the, the guy who just showed some emotion. Just, just hit somebody and sling it as hard as he can. I that's think that's all it was. Word. That's all it was. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Hey, let's get into this, Jack. Uh, if you don't mind, give us a little background about your broadcasting and how you've been, uh, how you got into it with the Indians. 
Yeah. I, so I've done a little bit of everything. So I, I went to Syracuse and I was like, I want to do talk radio because um, my uncle does afternoon drive in Chicago. And I was like, OK, I'm not even a hockey guy, but I saw him on the ice after the, the Blackhawks kept winning all those Stanley Cups. And I was like, this seems like the best job in the world. And then I go to Syracuse. I'm doing the talk thing. Uh, and then going into my sophomore year at Syracuse, I interned with WGN, which obviously like, you know, nationally distributed Harry Carey and all that stuff. And it was one of the last years that WGN had the rights to the Cubs and White Sox. And I was a production intern. So like four or five days a week, I was sitting in the back of the TV booth watching Len Casper call games for the Cubs and watching Jason Benetti call games for the White Sox. I was like, I'd be so silly to not try and make a TV booth at a ballpark, my office. Yeah. So I, I got into that and um, I was out on Cape Cod doing that college summer league in 2018, 2019. I was a short season affiliate of the Nats, which is in Auburn, New York, was in Auburn, New York. Um, I think they're a college summer league team now. And then 2020, I was supposed to go to Fort Wayne, Indiana to be with the Padres high A, but 2020 wiped out all minor league baseball. Um, so I was just kind of hanging out. I was driving for DoorDash for a minute. And then uh, 21 went back to Fort Wayne and 22, the uh, indie opportunity came about. So I've been there uh, since 22. But, dude, I've done gymnastics, softball, tennis. I did arena soccer um, in Utica, New York for a year. Like it, I anything that, you know, I've probably done in some form or fashion at some point just because I'm trying to you know, get good at it when I was, you know, 20 and, and still 26. Yeah, so course, you're from upstate? Hearts. No, I'm from, I'm from the Chicagoland area. I, okay. I went to Syracuse. I just Googled where did Bob Costas go to college and it said Syracuse. So I was like, you know what? Should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it wasn't Andrew Filipponi you were Googling. Damn right. <laughs> uh, you hey, know Filipponi? Uh, so I, I work with, um, you know, a couple guys over at the fan. I'll do like minor league reports and all that, but he, uh, he's a lightning rod for sure. Woo. Uh, his boy is worse though. hundred percent worse. Muller. Mm. <laughs> all Cleveland all the time. I hear you. Hey, Jack, can you talk about the season thus far? Maybe some highs, some lows, some good, some bad. Yeah, man, it, it's been good. The first, you know, six weeks of the Skeens show was really cool and that guy is uh one of a kind to say the least i um you know i i tell this story a little bit but like you know e classic example of what that guy does um you know tuesday morning you got a 6 30 7 o'clock game at home on a tuesday evening i'll just walk down you know the tunnel towards the clubhouse and you know i'll, I'll just see skeins you know, there with like a backpack and a water jug attached to the backpack. And he's working on like feeling the weight through his torso. Like this guy is getting work in at all hours of the day. And every, every piece of his day, every moment of his day is spent trying to get better. So watching that for six weeks and then like actually seeing the results on the Hill were really cool. Um, and yeah, man, it, it's been good. I think we've got the best ballpark in minor league baseball in Indy. Uh, I know Charlotte is up there. I know Durham is up there and Nashville's got a great one too, Vegas, but uh, tons of bias. I think Indy's the best ballpark in minor league baseball. And uh, I, it's it's a really fun time to be uh, coming out to the ballpark in Indy, whether you're seeing Skeens or now, you know, Henry Davis, Sawinski's back too. They're, they're a ball players to come see. I, I got a was just hiking he had a backpack with a jug of water so if you see him trouncing through indiana don't think it's skeins it might be our boy chops oh, 100%. Uh, Jesus. hey you said he works all the time i mean he goes <clears throat> home and gets some work in with olivia right <laughs> i'm not sure about that i don't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's a golden one let me say uh how about the pitchers what are, what are we looking at down there how about the starters I, is burrows back yet or is he still uh, uh long term no, Burroughs is on the shelf. Um, he's working his way back. Um, last check, I saw he was throwing some live batting practice down at the complex. So it should just be a matter of time for him. But I'm really excited to see him again. You know, that changeup was really far along. And he felt close when, when unfortunately, he went down at the beginning of last year. But, like, I, I think that guy is the forgotten man in the stable of pitching prospects for them right now. You know, you think about Jones and Skeens. Um, and obviously you think about Quinn, who's who's kind of bouncing up and down right now. But, you know, in double A, you've got Solomito, Bubba Chandler, Ashcraft, like all the Harrington, 
all these guys. You forget about Burroughs because we're about a year and a half removed from that. But I think Burroughs is a great one. So uh, no Burroughs yet, but we've seen Quinn. Quinn just went seven innings of one hit ball on Sunday. Um, and man, like Jones last year, Skeens this year, we're, we're kind of spoiled on the starting pitching front. Do you think it's a mental thing with Quinn, though? Because Quinn always has a bad first inning or second inning. Then he's smooth the rest of the way. It's a good question. I don't think so. Um, What I think it is, is he's tinkered with his fastball a bit over the last few years. When he was coming up, he was he was a four seam guy. And, you know, like that's tough in Greensboro. Greensboro is one of the more hitter friendly ballparks we've got in minor league baseball that isn't, you know, like playing in zero gravity in North Texas or Nevada or anywhere like that. But um, I, I do think that he's just kind of you know, finishing the process of going from that four seam guy to that sinker guy. And, you know, there are points like, Hey, if you were a four seamer guy until you were 21, 22 years old, and now you're trying to find that sinker because you feel like it plays better, like sinkers flatten out at points and, you know, it it catches too much of the zone. It can be hit hard. And I I think that was what he was running into at the big league level. But if he's on with that sinker, I think that guy can put it in cruise control in the first inning and, and keep moving. I'd like to see him come up and be the number four. Yep. And then get Burroughs back and be your number five. I mean, sure. how, however you want to juggle those last two, but I mean the top of the the top of the pirates rotation is just phenomenal. For sure. Yeah. You know? I mean it's it, and it's set for for quite a while here. I mean, you got you got Keller on that on that team friendly deal. I know it's a lot of money, but like, dude this era of baseball, that's a very team friendly contract for a guy 100%. that can give you 200 innings. And I Skeens and Jones are looking like nine figure pitchers at some point down the line. Oh, gosh, they won't be in Pittsburgh that. then. You don't, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're gone. I'm not getting a Jersey. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a Clemente. You never go wrong with a Clemente Jersey. <laughs> hey, any, any relief pitching we could see coming up to the, to the bigs, because I'll tell you what, they need relief pitching. Uh, Chapman has been beyond a disappointment. Yeah. Um, Holderman and, and Ben Norris come around now, but those yeah. are really the only two guys. I mean, Macias, yeah. Macias, yeah. Uh, they had lost him. Is it Macias? Uh, Moretta. Moretta, Moretta, that's it. Moretta, yep. yep. Yeah. I. You know, it's unique because, like, I always kind of view bullpens as a turnstile a bit, like, you can be really good for a year and then you have five bad outings the following year and your value is, is zapped entirely. So I feel like that is kind of the easiest one to plug and play guys in. And, um, you know, I I think we're kind of experiencing the turnstile. Like we had Carmen Majinski for, you know, about a month or so to open the year. We had Kyle Nicholas for a month or so to open the year. And, um, you know, we're, we've got a guy like Ryder Ryan now who, you know, keeps on shuttling back and forth. I think he's yeah. already been option three times and Jose Hernandez is getting close to that too. So I, I really do think that Indy is just kind of functioning as bullpen depth for them right now. And, you know, like we've got Ryan on the roster right now and, and some other guys like that. So I, I really do think it's a matter of, you know, like who are the seven guys in that pen that we're going to roll with right now. And then you've got three more, you know, almost excess in Indy and, and you're just waiting on that next call. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, I like, um, I like sorry, Majinski. I... Yeah. I do. Hey, how, um, how has Henry Davis been since his arrival? Um, I know defense isn't his issue, more of his bats. And, and is he getting any, uh, any time at first base? So no time at first. Good question. I know first is kind of the hot button topic in Pittsburgh right now, but, um, you, the, no Rowdy's time, Rowdy. At, I know that no time at first base. Um, I mean, he was playing a lot of right last year, but um, now Henry is really just catching and DHing. Um, I haven't seen him take any reps at first base. Uh, he's hitting the crap out of the ball right now. I, I it's it's really impressive to see. You know, it was a couple games. I want to say like a four or five game stretch where you know, yeah, he was he was swinging and missing at the upstairs fastball, and you know he was getting under some pitches, and you got a lot of infield pop ups and pop ups and foul ground that kind of thing. But now he's really straightened it out, and and he's starting to tear the cover off of it. And you'll see, you know, the one hundred five to one hundred eight mile an hour line drives, and it's resulting in homers, it's resulting in doubles, and um, you know the OPS right now is well over a thousand over his last dozen games. He's one of the better hitters in minor league baseball over the last dozen or so games, and Indy's got a couple of them. Um, something that has not been sparse in Indianapolis this year is is guys that are tearing the cover off the ball for extended stretches. I mean, we had 
We had Jiwan Bay and Nick Gonzalez doing it before they got the call again, and both those guys have looked really solid in the big leagues. I know shorter sample for Bay, but Nick has been, you know, hitting it so well up there. And uh, Jake Lamb's been doing it all year, and then you got Henry doing it right now, and Matt Gorski doing it right now. So, How about so what, you're are... saying, what you're yeah. saying is the Pirates should have a four A team because they're doing well at three, but they're not doing well in the majors. So they should have a four A team. I, I think they're kind of functioning as a next man up situation right now, which is great because like, I, I think all these guys understand that they can be called on as soon as you need them because the offense is performing so well here. They've got the best team batting at, like they're hitting 277 as a team, which is the best clip in the international league. I think in all of triple a baseball and one of the better clips in all of minor league baseball. Um, so like, you know that that offense is performing well. The offense is sputtering up at the big league level. Yet there's going to be some change at points. We're already seeing, you know, a couple of changes here. I mean, with Sawinski, with Davis being optioned, with Bay and Gonzalez being added to the fold, guys are going to get their shot if they're hitting. And I really do think it's just a matter of time. I I think the the hitting has taken off, though, to be quite honest with you, Jack, since uh, Skeens has come on the fold. To be yeah. honest, I, honest to God, yeah, like I, I watch him. I, I, almost embarrassed to say this. I watch them faithfully and uh, I just see a, a different ball club. Now, why? I know Sheen just said about, you know, trotting to Lee's out there. I don't get that. Like that makes no sense to me. I don't care if you paid him $3.2 million. Somebody, some team's water boys make that, you know, <laughs> he, they need to cut bank with the guy if he's not going to produce and they keep making excuses. Give Jake Lamb a shot. Now, I know Jake Lamb is characteristically not a very good Major League Baseball player, but maybe he finds some lightning in a bottle when he comes up. I don't know. You've got to do something, though, for them from that perspective. Yeah, I, I think it's about trying the hot hand, you know, and, you know, like it, it's a long season. They do it every day for six months. Um, and, you know, like, Rowdy has kind of established precedent in in terms of success like he had a 35 home or what was it 21 or 22 um for 3.2 obviously you give him runway to try and figure it out but you're right like i it seems pretty clear just to the objective lens that you might be running out of runway for that and mm -hmm. and a change may come and uh, i think they have that clear-cut answer guys hitting 346 at the triple a level in in lamb so um yeah i I think it makes a ton of sense, and and we'll see what happens. But uh, you know, that's that's a decision for uh, Mr. Charrington and company. Is is the pitching that much different at the AAA level than it is at the major league level? It is. I I did this dive yesterday. Um, league average ERA in Major League Baseball right now sits at three point nine six. Uh, average ERA in the International League is at 4.95. So it's a run worse in the wow. International League than it is in Major League Baseball. And then you go to OPS. Um, first time since like, I want to say like 86 or something, um, that Major League average OPS is under 700. I think it's 699 right now. Average OPS in the International League is 771. So like hitters are hitting better down here because they're seeing the inferior pitching. I really do think like this is as stark a contrast between AAA and the big leagues as we've seen in in at least a half decade. So when Davis comes up though, when he if they decide to bring him back because they brought up what what's his name Cook or Koch or uh, Cook yeah great yeah, Cook so, yeah Cook who was not really doing particularly well in Indy uh, like they they're just trying to give Davis more at bats but. What do you think? Yeah, I think they want him to establish a rhythm. And like, frankly, I understand it. And Cook, you know, is an okay guy to pull because he was Skeens' personal catcher down here. Like nobody else was catching Paul Skeens starts. I think Rondall caught one on rehab. But, you know, I wouldn't be hey, shocked. Who wants to Skeens. catch that? What? 100, 102 mile an hour. Who wants to catch No it? one wants to catch it. I was like, how's your thumb, man? I mean, it's like, I, I wear a thumb guard. Thumb back here. I know. I, like, I was just like, are you good? Like, do you wear an extra batting glove under the glove? Like, how are we doing this? And he's like, I wear a thumb guard. We're fine. Um, he's got that steel plate. Yep. Yeah, he's got that steel plate. But, you know, he also, uh, he said, like, it's, it's fun to catch because he doesn't miss spots either. Like, he's not going to spike 102. He knows where 102 is going, which is what makes him Paul Skeens. Like, trust me, there are a lot of guys down here that can flirt with 100 miles an hour. There are not a lot of guys that can locate 100 miles an hour. And the thing that separates Skeens from the rest 
Skeens from generic bullpen arm that's nowhere close to a top 100 list and a top five prospect in all of baseball is that guy knows exactly where 101 is going in the first inning and where 101 is going in the seventh. And and Cook said that you know, that kind of makes his life easy. But yes, he does wear a thumb guard to deal with Skeens. But um, yeah, I think it's about getting Henry like every day run. And, you know, he would go up, he would you know, be in a timeshare with Grandal, Bart, whoever was healthy at the time, it's Grandal now. So why take everyday at bats away from him when the whole purpose of him being here is to establish an everyday rhythm? So it makes sense. Like why screw up that guy's rebound process because of what's happening up there? And I, I do think it makes sense in May. Now, if it happened in August or September and they're, you know, four games out, I think we're having a different conversation, but it's happening in in mid to late May. Who coaches the hitters down there? Um, so Eric Munson is the hitting coach here, and uh, Eric has been with them. I've been here three years. I think twenty two is his first year, so he's been here same time as me. This is year three for him. What's his level of success? Like what? What's his? You know, in terms yeah. of batting average as a team, in terms of OPS. Yeah, related, I mean they they do really they do really good stuff. What were you saying? Is he related to Thurman? No, not related to Thurman. Great question. Um, but no, I mean, like, I, I do think that, you know, he's got it. He's got it right. And he was a very talented hitter in his own right. He was a former top five overall pick, I want to say in, you know, 90 something. So um, he could really swing it in his day. And he has great communication with these guys. And um, I mean, I think Nick Gonzalez is the perfect example. You look at the side by side of what he was doing last year and what he was doing this year. He's way more upright. He's way more athletic. It's a total feel thing. Um, and it feels like, you know, he's really helping these guys get right. Would he serve the Pirates well? Yeah, that, that's the tough one for sure. Um, you know, I I am not sure how they're going to go about that. Um, I've I've seen all the uh, criticism of, of what's happening at the big league level. Unfortunately, like, I just don't know the intricacies well enough to, you know, kind of offer – you know, perfect thoughts. On it's that. interesting because you said you did a deep dive the other night on something and, and I looked in depth on Haynes and um, yeah, we'll just yeah. leave it at that because I, I, he got, he had a team hitting 270 or something like that Milwaukee and they dismissed him because they had hitters and they were only hitting 270. Yeah. You know, weird thing about those jobs is like, there's constant turnover and guys get third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. Like there are guys that are major league hitting coaches for, you know, 20, 25 years and they, you know, it's opportunity, opportunity. And, um, you know, like at the end of the day, we don't really know what the relationship looks like between Andy and players. Um, but yeah, I mean like the results, I, I know they've been certainly finicky over the last few seasons. How has Jack looked? Uh, only one game. It was good. Triple at 108 to right center in his first AB. So it was it was really solid. Um, I I saw on Twitter a couple of people were talking about you know the changes he's already made. It's one game. Stance. Yeah, but like it is one game. So you know want to see it over five to ten, and I'm sure that's what the Pirates want to see too. It's not the the thing about you know guys getting optioned and then trying to regain a groove is it doesn't happen over six games. Like, it's got to happen over a month. So when you see guys kind of shuttled back and forth between the big leagues and AAA, nobody figures something out in three games in the minor leagues. They could start to get a feel back in three games, but in order for them to really feel comfortable with what they're doing and that new feel, that regained feel, it takes a couple weeks, man. So um, it was a good start. And, you know, obviously there were some visual changes there, but, um, you know, hoping to see it over the next week, two, three. I, and I was going to say, you know, I saw <laughs> automatically, you know, all the Yenzers are like downplaying. Uh, he had that he had that triple and they're like uh, Major League Baseball outfielder would have uh, gloved that ball. Uh, he's facing terrible pitching. You know, there was no, hey, it's good to see him hit the ball. Yeah, uh, like he did nothing. It was just a typical Pittsburgher responding the way I would expect the Yenzer to respond. Yeah, I, I don't think it's unique to Pittsburgh. I think it's everybody. They're just looking for negative cop outs, right? Everybody looks for an excuse instead of saying, oh, that was nice. Like n Nobody's OK saying, oh, that was nice to anything anymore, like in any region. Well, we'll just wait and see on him. And we'll wait and see 
we'll wait and see on on Henry. I, I really I'm pulling for both those guys. I like Jack Sawinski. He seems yeah. just like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, uh, he's, he's he strikes he's out and strikes out and strikes out. He never shows emotion because he's probably not supposed to, and he just goes back and he keeps on keeps on working. Yeah, man. Uh, I the those guys are really impressive, and and the idea of professional baseball. Um, you know, I've had I've had some really interesting conversations with players about it, and um, you know, I go back to a conversation with Mike Massey, who is a second baseman for the Royals, and you know, I was talking to him when he was in college, and he was like, the thing that unlocked a new level for me was. I know that I got to feel the same and have the same conversations with my girlfriend, with my family, with my friends. If I go 0 for 4 with 3Ks or 4 for 4 with two homers, like that's what baseball is. And you do it every day for six months. You got to feel the same thing. And if you feel the same thing, if you develop those patterns, you're going to be successful more times than not. Yep. I agree. So so you talk. um, uh, Good. I was just asking real quick. We, We talked pitching. We talked yep. about the players been up and down, Davis, Bay, Swensky, Gonzalez, all those guys. Are there any guys that we should keep our eye on, ear out for? Position-wise, we ha- we, we're we not aware of who we should maybe see in the near future. Matt Gorski, um, if you don't know about him, second-round pick, I want to say 19 out of Indiana. Um he is power and speed. There's some whiff there, um, but he's on a heater of all heaters right now. I was looking at um, the best performers in minor league baseball over the last two weeks, and you know, by by pretty much anything you look at, he's he's top ten in minor league baseball across any level. And this guy, I think it's seven homers in his last nine. He's got eight in his last twelve. It's ridiculous. Like it, something that he did that like it was very hard for me to wrap my brain around. Position player came into pitch last homestand and he threw like kind of a clunker 56 miles an hour on the way in. Like it's really hard to hit a ball hard when it comes in at 56. Came in at 56, came out at 113, went 478 feet. There are very like there are very few people on the planet that can do that to a baseball when it comes in that slowly. And he has a longer swing, which, again, results in that whiff, but also results in those mammoth numbers. He can play a very good center field. He can play a very good corner outfield. And he's been playing a decent bit of first base, too. I think he's got 10 starts at first so far this year. So it's something to watch. Okay, so I don't know if you have the answer to this, but humor us. Why the hell won't the Pirates pull someone up like that? Just give him a month. He's hitting seven homers in nine games. Yeah. Let, let him finish out the month and then bring him up to see what he can do. What, why, why don't they do that? So he's not on the 40 man, which creates, <clears throat> um, you know, a, a tough situation. Grant Cook was just added to the 40 man. I guess Jason delays on the 60. So there was no need to DFA somebody. But like, you know, I'm thinking about the, the corresponding move for Skeens. Everybody got amped. Skeens came up. The corresponding move was Rowanzi Contreras is in Anaheim now. And like Ro, I know he was struggling. I know he was a bullpen arm, but. That's a former like top 60 prospect in all of baseball. And you're still holding out hope. You still you still like see flashes of a guy that is still 24 years old. Like they're in a, a tight situation when it comes to the 40. So that is kind of the reasoning, I guess, that I can, you know, really palette yeah. and understand. Um, you know, he's also a streaky player, Gorski is. And, you know, you want to see, hey, what does the dip look like after, you know, after the right. peak? And, yeah. you know, I, I think they want to see that because if the dip gets really low, you know, you're, you know, signing up for something that you rather have happening in Indy than in Pittsburgh. But, um, you know, there are some organizations that can ride the hot hand like that because, you know, they kind of have sitting ducks on the 40 and they're okay. Kind of moving on to what could be greener pastures. I think the pirates are like actually in a good spot with the exception of, you know, maybe a couple here, but those couple are, are making big money. Yeah, I I can make the forty man roster move for you if you really really want me to. Jack. <laughs> I think I it's a pretty I easy think. one, especially when you told me he's played ten games at first base. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing we're, we're seeing the dips, but we don't see the dues. And it, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, just experiment here, try someone. Yeah. So. How's Leo Ver doing? Yeah, Peggy's been all right. Um, he started really hot. He was hitting about three thirty. 
Then he dipped a bit. He was striking out a bit more than really he ever did in the lower levels, which was interesting. Um, but he's been a run producer and he's been playing a, a pretty solid shortstop too. Um, you know, I, I think he was thrusted into a situation like you got to remember Piguero's really young still. I think he's 23, 24 years old. Um, like when Cruz was out for the year, it made a ton of sense to get him ample run at short because he was the best option internally. Now that Cruz is healthy and you don't have everyday reps for him up there, it's really important, you know, for him to get everyday reps at the AAA level. And I, I think he's making the most of it. And at the end of the day, like hot and cold always normalizes to who you are over the course of a season. And, you know, he's he's hitting about 280 right now. And, you know, he's got a couple of homers, handful of doubles, and he's driving in runs. I, I think that's who he is. And, you know, high efficiency base dealer, not going to be like high volume, but I bet he finishes with 15 or so bags and he's only caught two or three times. He'll catch on because I yeah. saw I saw him play in the Altoona and he was I saw him play for Altoona in Harrisburg and yeah. um, he knocked three, three that night. I think he hit three out of the park that night. Wow. You know, they couldn't contain him. Wow. Shane, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was one, uh, wondering what's the latest on my man Domingo, and can he recapture that magic he had in the Bronx? Yeah, so Domingo has made two starts. Um, he was building up. It was a visa issue. It was a work visa issue because he signed in mid-March. Um, and, you know, like that's something that you really don't think about for the most part um, because signings of, you know, Dominican guys will happen in January or December and they've got time to get all the visa, all the work visa stuff taken care of. But he was just delayed. He pretty much didn't get to Bradenton until you know the tail end of, to spring training, like the back third of spring training. So he was building up in Bradenton. He made a start in Bradenton and he's made two starts here at this point. Um, you know, he's still spinning the bender. He's, you know, like 82, 83 with the curveball, which is where it was when he was perfect last year in Oakland. And, you know, he's been about 92, 93 with that fastball. Um, you know, I, I think it's a matter of him getting, you know, back acclimated to major league caliber or, or under major league caliber hitting and, uh, you know, go from there. But I, I do think he's still kind of in the later stages of, of his buildup process. Do you think, uh, if he gets himself to where he needs to be, say, let's say July, let's say mid July. Yeah. Do you think we could see him in the majors, either at a middle relief role or like, uh, a setup guy, or do you think they thrust him into a starting? I mean, are they stretching? Let me ask you this. Are they stretching him out in Indy? Yeah, he's throwing like 80 pitches. Okay. So he's he's being stretched out as a starting pitcher. The question then becomes big league need. Because if you've got, you know, your four guys up there like, hey, say Priester's really humming, and Martin Perez is only on the shelf for a little bit, and, and Falter's throwing the way he is, that's six. So, like, you're already out of space. Um now, the bullpen I know has been finicky over the last few weeks. And, you know, if you're looking for for a multiple inning guy to, you know, throw in a, in a tight deficit, you know, you starter only goes four. You need somebody to, to bridge you two or three. Um, he could be that guy. And uh, they, they signed him to a minor league free agent deal. So it's not like financially they're going to thrust right. him up if if it's not necessary. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he can absolutely be that guy. And, and he could be, you know, Swiss Army knife type. Hey, check me on this. They signed him a two years, though, right? Did they sign him with a two-year deal? That's a great question. I didn't see the contract specifics. Um, I just know it was a minor league deal, maybe a split deal, so he earns more in the big leagues. I, I yeah. think that would be how it works. Man, I'd love to see him pan out. He was uh, he was golden in the Bronx. He, he really was, was. He was perfect in Oakland. Uh, what was it, Tuesday yeah. night? Game ended after midnight Eastern? Like, crazy. Yeah. Hey, uh Jared Troilo's up with the, the the Pirates. He's another guy that I think could use some swings at, down in Indy. Uh, he's he's struggling at the plate. Um, you know, maybe maybe that's maybe that's a flop with with Pagero. Pagero can maintain some kind of consistency. Yeah, well, he can really pick it, Triolo, and he can play, you know, a couple of different spots. He was getting a lot of run at second early, yeah. but now, you know, that seems to be Nick's job every day, and understandably so. He's the hot bat right now. Um, Hayes coming off the shelf may create that situation. Um, I'm not sure how they want to handle that, but, yeah, I mean, like, th there are a couple of guys, right, like Jared Triolo, Alika Williams up there, 
you know, they, they are the depth. They are the infield depth at this point. And you got guys like Leo over Piguero, Jake Lamb down here that, you know, it, it almost feels interchangeable at this point. I, I think it's really dependent on if the Pirates deem additional reps, everyday reps, you know, necessary for a guy like that. I think part of my issue with uh, uh, the coaching, the management, whatever you want to say, is the fact that they'll have a guy who's hot like a Connor Joe. Yeah. He'll be hot. And uh, next thing you know, they're sitting him on a bench for for the other guy first base. And, yeah. and you know, you talk about getting reps for these guys. Hey, these guys are role players. They're bench players. You don't need to trot them out once or twice a week. That just, you know, in my opinion, they let me put it to you this way. If I was coaching that team, those guys would get their at-bats, get their playing time, but they wouldn't be getting like, like they do in Pittsburgh. So I don't yeah. know. I guess we'll see down the road. You're right. It is. It's a long season. We're only what fifty some games into it. Low fifties. Yeah, I think we're about a third of the way through here. And you play how many? Uh, we play one fifty. I think we just hit the fifty game marker. Oh, that's pretty big. Hey, yeah. Here's a question for you. This comes from Michael God. He's he's from Europe. He's <laughs> uh, and. He says, uh, apologies if I'm off the mark with this. I'm from Europe, and I know a lot of potential prospects are from the U.S., South America, and, and, you know, Asian countries, we'll say. Uh, Do scouts look at Europe? That's a good question. Um, Max Kepler's from Germany. That's kind of it off the dome that I'm thinking of. Uh, The top pitcher in this draft class, Chase Burns, who's at Wake Forest, is is Italian-born. Um, but grew up in Tennessee, so he's just a college arm. I think it was he was military family. That's why he was born in Italy. But um, yeah, I mean, I I I think so. I think they look over there. Um, I think the World Baseball Classic is really helping on that front. But you know, the hotbeds are the hotbeds for a reason. I I'm just not sure that there is, you know, an amazing market for you know, professional caliber talent in Europe, but I, I've seen a bunch of guys, uh, this kid Alda Gary in the Phillies organization is from Italy and he's been, he's been throwing the crap out of the ball. So I, I think it's going to take more precedent, right? Like it's going to take a, a couple of, you know, road pavers for, you know, organizations to say, Hey, maybe we should plant some roots in Italy. Maybe we should plant some roots in Germany, that kind of thing. Interestingly, you know, the NBA, the NFL, they all, you know, even the NHL, we know soccer, they all have such a strong base in Europe. But Major League Baseball's base is is mostly in the Asian and and South American Latino countries. Yeah, it's getting better. I think the London series is going to really help with that. And there was a really good showing in London. And there was a good showing in London for Yankees Red Sox in 19. And, um, I, I don't remember who's going over to London this year, but two more teams are going over to London. I, I think that is a really good showcase. A lot like the NFL is doing, running a what Jacksonville out there like six times a year. It feels like, or uh, you know, however many they're doing it. But um, Mets I, I think Phillies, those, yeah, I think those games in London are important, and Mets Phillies is going to be great. Uh, I'll tell you what, put the way Bryce Harper's playing this year, putting him over there is really going to draw people to see him play. Hundred percent. You know, he's just been. Tremendous. Hey, I got one final question for you. What, what's what been the most thrilling game you've ever caught or the most thrilling thing you've ever seen in your young career? Because it is a young career. It, yeah, young, for sure. Was it, let, me, let me ask you, that. was it Skeens or Vanessa Hutchins milling around town? <laughs> yeah. um, I, Vanessa, I think, kept kind of to herself when uh-huh. Cole Tucker was here. And uh, Cole and I only crossed over in Indy for like, like two, three weeks or something before he headed over to, to the Rockies organization. So uh, didn't get to meet Vanessa when she was in town. But um, no, Skeens was really exciting. I will say that. If you guys you're, remember. You're pretty the, young. You're pretty young. You probably had your high school musical soundtrack ready to be autographed, right? <laughs> yeah. So my girlfriend's a big high school musical person. I was not a big high school musical person. So okay. she needed to I'll like. Let anybody uh, know, but... She needed to fill me in on the <laughs> importance, like societal importance of high school musical. And I was like, oh, wow, this was really like a, a, a landmark moment in, <laughs> you know, my generation's history, I guess. Um, but um, no, I Skeens was electric. Uh, you guys, are you guys college football fans? Yes. Oh, yeah. You remember that crazy play in Maction where you had like 10 to 15 laterals from Western Michigan and the play was blown dead at about the 20-yard line and then 
the the teams and the band came on the field in like 2021 and Western Michigan ran it in and they thought they had just won the Mac West, but it was null and void and Ball State had won the Mac West. Yeah. I called that game on radio. Oh, so wow. that was probably my moment where I was just like, it my my favorite part, like the, my favorite humble brag is I knew it was an illegal forward pass when it happened. And I saw the flag fly and I was like, that's an illegal forward pass. It was two yards forward. And then like you keep going. And, you know, I didn't sell it as well as my boss who was doing it on the TV side did. Um, you know, he he totally to sold it. And he was like, this is like the annexation of Puerto Rico. That, that you know, trick play. But um, <laughs> I, I just kind of like... <laughs> I, I knew it was happening. I was very happy that I knew it was happening, but that was probably the highlight of my my broadcast career at this point. That's a pretty neat. That's a pretty neat highlight. Yeah. Right. Hey, I want to thank so much for uh, thank you so much for making that connection with us, uh, giving us the lowdown on what's going on at Indy. Uh, best of luck on your young career. I know I keep saying that, but man, you've got it. You've got a bright future ahead of you. Uh, and you know. Please don't hesitate to email me when things are happening down there so I can kind of slide them out, give me a nugget or two. Um, get our boy Henry Davis right. Get our boy yeah. Sawinski right. Let's get him back. And maybe we can get the Gorski kid up there to, to hit, hit a little bit. You know, Gorski. Maybe yeah, we can send Roddy not? down there get fixed. I don't know. <laughs> why not, man? Appreciate you guys. If anyone yeah. needs to do a little soft toss, I used to you know do soft toss for the kids. Gotcha. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Great yeah. having you on the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jack. Peace out. Good stuff. Yes. Gorski. Really good stuff. He's on the Gorski. board. I saw him. Listen, I saw Matt Gorski playing at uh, El Tuna last year. Seven he, homers in nine games? What the yes, hell is that? That's this? a fucking shit ton of homers. Well, you know, he told you, though, that the pitching isn't as great down there, which do you really care at this point? Like, I, I just mean, need somebody to come up and give it a chance. You know. Yeah. I mean, we're, listen, we're watching Roddy Talese. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. He's bat like 197, 176, something. He's 165. Yes. Something. It's worth it's worth rolling someone else out there. Absolutely. At 3.2 million, I'd have no problem cutting. See, they're they're looking at it as oh, we're not spending that much money. It's 3.2 million. I'm looking at it as it's only 3.2 million. Get rid of his ass and get someone in here who can play that spot. I'm looking at it as you're going to end up in last place anyway if you keep doing the dumb shit you're doing. Try True. something different, right? Yeah, yeah. Just try something. Hey, you got a quizzle for us today, Sizzle? I got the quizzle. Sizzle's quizzle. Um, how many MLB teams are there? Uh, there are 28. 30. 28. Yep, that's right. 30. Hey, check it out. Junior chimed in. He said he'd rather see Davis play first and DFH leaves. Junior, I don't know where you caught in on the on the show, but uh, uh, he told us that Davis has taken zero reps at first base since he's gone down to Indy. He's playing uh, DH, and he's catching the, the bulk of the games. And the only reason they brought Cook up is because he is kind of like the personal catcher for Skeens. So uh, good comment. I'm not going to say you're wrong. Yeah. I feel the same way. I asked him that question. So there are 30 MLB teams. How many minor league teams are there? Woo. 101. They cut 40. They cut 40 of them and three it, years ago. So I'm going to say 100. No, there's at least 120. 120, yeah. Yep. Can you name all four Pirate or Pittsburgh affiliate teams? Yeah. Altoona. Yeah. We just had the other one. Just talk about Indianapolis. About. Yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. Two uh, more. Greensboro. Yep. The Marauders. Yes. Yep. Bradenton. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Good job, that three, Sizzle. That was three quiz, quizzles. Dream, you have a question for us nope. today? Nope. I only have questions when all four are here. Three oh, don't work. Yeah. Kind of kind of missing big <clears> chops. <throat> He's probably still driving home. He's trying to get in before sundown. He's <laughs> sundown. <Richie? laughs> He's swinging that gallon of water. Hey, he, he had a big picture up the other day of himself, and he had his beard. He said, should I or shouldn't I? But like 50 people commented whether he should or shouldn't shave, uh, shave his beard. I'm like, come on, Chops. Shave that shit. It's hot out. Hey, tell them where Dude. they can find you, Dream. Everywhere. 
You can find them on Instagram. You can find them on Facebook. What's your snap? Everywhere. I don't have yeah, a snap. No snap. I never how about you? I guess. How, how about your TikTok? What's your TikTok? Rasheen Hill. Oh, very Easy, nice. Baby. I'm my heart. Yeah. Because he's a dream weaver. <laughs> hey, sis, where can we find you? Wherever Sheen ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on X, I'm on Instagram, and I get I think I'm on Facebook now. I don't know how the hell that happened. You are but, baby. You're on uh, one T Youngie. Nice, nice. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak up for the real big chops. You can find Michael Chops Mills at the real big chops on the gram, as he says. And uh what do you say on on X? He is uh, goes by his government name, Michael Gregory Chops, I think it is, or Michael Gregory Mills, and uh, he's on Facebook too. Uh, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast by checking out our webpage, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat at OSP with MM. You can find us on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Original Sports Podcast. Shout out to our Networks, Let's Talk Sports, Sideline, ESEN, that's Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, as well as Listen Frederick and Manny Media. Um, you can catch our show tonight. You can catch our show tonight at 9 on Roku from 9 to 10. Our Memorial Day show will be airing tonight from 9 to 10 on the ESEN Network. Hey, email us, uh, email us if you've got any questions, comments, concerns. Tonight, Mike, thanks for joining us. Um, Got any comments, questions, you know, anything you want to shout out on us at Original Sports Podcast. Like whose baby picture is that in the back, Shane? That shout out. Give us a shout out. Where? Uh, you, right know, you don't know who that is? I know who it is. Okay. People have been asking, who's who's Shane's baby picture? He's a cute baby. Uh, that is, I that know is, who the, he is the late, great Christopher <laughs> Wallace. Oh, my God. Big Smalls. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, shout out to Medley for doing our voice intro. Uh, shout out to Charlie Hodgson for writing our music. Jackie. Hey, listen, we aren't going to be back till next Tuesday, you guys. Next, next. Tuesday, we've got next. Smitty from around the 412 coming on. We're going to talk all Steelers. He gets inside that locker room. He's going to throw us a ton of nuggets. Maybe not just about the Steelers either because he gets around. That's why he's around. He's Experience like with us every week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Peace. I say he's like your ex-girlfriends. He gave-